Hey, welcome to another video from Skinny Medic. In this video, we're going to talk about the H&H &H compressed gauze. I want to show you what it looks like, show you what the packaging looks like, of course. Then I'm going to open it up and show you what the gauze looks like inside. And then the last, I'm going to show you how to use this. These things are fairly inexpensive, but you don't want to open up your all, all of your stock that you have in your IFAC. So that's what this video is intended for. I'm going to open it up and show you what it looks like on the inside. In this package here, there's about four yards of a cotton gauze. There's no hemostatic agent like the combat gauze or cellox. This is just strictly gauze, which will help in uncontrolled bleeding. So it's sealed airtight in this heavy plastic here, so it's good. If it's sealed, it's sterile. Now, if we're using this for our first response bleeding, meaning there's uncontrolled hemorrhage, honestly, we probably really don't care that it's sterile, but it does help if it's sterile, then we can use it to prevent infection. So it does have the heavy plastic here, and on each side here, you have a notch in the plastic and a notch in the plastic here, and this has a little bit of a grip to it. So you don't have to use your scissors or your knife to open this package up, typically. Now, I will say that if my hands were bloody, my hands were wet, they had mud on them, uh, they were slick, if this package was slick, I may not be able to get enough of a tear on it, enough grip to open this up. So you may have to use your knife, use your shears. So, but if my hands are dry, obviously it tears fairly easy, just like that. And then we can reach inside and pull out our gauze. So as we open up the package here, you can see this is basically just a cotton cheesecloth. There again, there's no hemostatic agents on this. It's just a cloth. And it's not a Z-fold either, like some of the uh, other items you'll see. It's just a roll. So as we were packing into the, this in the wound, I would use my dominant hand to pack this in. And then you're going to have to unroll this with your non-dominant hand. So you have a large open wound here. This hand would go down to the source of the bleeding. You're going to feel the blood rushing or pulsating over your finger here. And then you can actually take a little knot here, like a little roll and put this to the source of the bleeding. Now once your finger finds the source of the bleeding, it, you always leave pressure there. So this would go down to the source of the bleeding. Once I pack that in there, this finger would come over and go to that pulse of the finger. Then I can pull some more with this finger, put it back, and then put it back. And then you're going to pack the entire wound until it is tight and overflowing with gauze. Make a little mound with the gauze. Then you can take your hand, push down with with a lot of body weight and you're going to hold pressure there. Now another item that would go good with this compressed gauze here is a compression bandage because once we have the wound packed tight and we have a little bit of mound on top of the wound here so we can push that mound down to create more force inside the wound you can actually take a compression bandage like this is really bandage here and wrap it and that's going to hold that pressure for you while this gauze here is helping control bleeding. So this is the hemostatic agent we were talking about earlier in the video. This has a hemostatic agent bound to it. This does not. These are both four yards, so you get the same amount of material in each package. But this does have a hemostatic agent, which is going to basically it takes the water out of the blood, makes it thicker, which is going to help the clotting process. And then it also has the galls in there as well. So those are both galls, but one has a hemostatic agent. This is why this is going to be more expensive than the H&H &H galls. So this gauze here is not to take the place of a tourniquet. If you have an extremity that's bleeding profusely and you can't control it with direct pressure, the still the golden rule applies here to apply the tourniquet here. This to me looks, works good for your junctional areas like your armpit and your groin that has a penetrating injury. You can poke this in, apply pressure, and get bleeding to stop. So I hope this video helps. You never know when you'll be the first responder. Remember you need the right gear and the right training.